By now, we're all too familiar with the Western narrative on Xinjiang and the so-called re-education camps. Many Western reports suggest that this is little more than a quote-unquote Nazi concentration camp where people inside are going through hell. Now, what better way to verify some of their claims than to actually get to the heart of it all? This is Kashgar, a predominantly Uyghur Muslim city in southwestern Xinjiang. To begin with, most Western reports suggest people inside these education centers could be there indefinitely. Now, local officials said the vast majority of the attendees have actually picked up a skill, completed the program, and went home. We traveled across Xinjiang in the past few days and actually found some of these attendees. 26-year-old Rukia Yakup spent 10 months in the education center. While there, she perfected her Mandarin skills and studied sales. Now she is a real estate sales agent, earning over 8,000 yuan or over 1,100 US dollars a month, way above the local average. Another claim was that after these training programs, some Uyghurs are still missing. Still no info is gathering steam on Western social media. We questioned local government officials about this. And the answer we got was among the 100 plus missing Uyghurs, half of them cannot be verified due to incomplete information such as misspelling of names, and a third are under criminal investigation or convicted criminals. The rest are actually living normal lives, and many of them have never been to the education centers, including 67-year-old Hanimham Tudi. Facebook user published this video claiming to be Hanimham Tudi's daughter and said her mother was put in these education camps. So recently there has been some videos on the internet going viral saying that you have been missing, uh, saying that you have been in this re-education camps um, in Xinjiang. Uh, is that true? Yeah. <laughs> also, many Western sources say China has detained anywhere between 1 to 3 million Uyghurs, a figure repeated so many times that it is almost considered a fact. Now, according to Grey Zone, an independent agency dedicated to investigative journalism, these figures, these claims, are largely based on two highly questionable studies. The first is the U.S. government-backed network of Chinese human rights defenders. It formed its estimate by interviewing a grand total of just eight people. I'm no economist, but eight people doesn't sound like a great sample size. The second study relied largely on media reports and speculation. Its author, Adrian Zenz, is considered a far-right fundamentalist Christian who opposes homosexuality and gender equality and who once said he is led by God on a mission against China. There's not just misinformation, but disinformation out there. This video, claiming to be a Chinese police beating a Muslim for reading Quran in his house, got millions of retweets and likes. But independent studies showed this was actually an Indonesian police beating a local thief. What's more, pictures purported to show Uyghurs in Xinjiang's detention camps turned out to be doctored photos during a protest in Turkey and at a migrant shelter in Thailand. It is difficult to see the full picture of a region as diverse and complex as Xinjiang in the first place, and this Western propaganda doesn't make things much easier. Wang Guan, CGTN, Kashgar, Xinjiang.